What is love? Is love time? Going to what find out, sirs? Don't is love time? Is love thought? When you say to someone, I love you, and I hope you mean it, is that love the expression or the outcome of your self fulfillment, whether it is sexual or otherwise? Right? So. Why is there then this division? I won't go further into the question of love. If you want, to, I'll go into it now. Good Lord, it's so already twenty past eleven. All right, sir. Let's go into it. Is love thought the movement of thought? You understand? Is love, which means, is love the product of time? Please carefully watch it in yourself. Or is love pleasure? Pleasure has become extraordinarily important in life. The whole industry of entertainment, sports, Religious entertainment, right? Churches, you know, go there to be entertained, to have new kind of sensations. So is love, thought, time, pleasure, and is it is love bizarre? Has love a place? You know, has thought a place in love? Yes, go on. If thought has a place in love, then that love is limited. And that which is limited must create conflict. Right? This is logical sanity. So is it possible to look to have that perfume, that extraordinary thing called love, which is a great flame in one's life, without all this travail, without all this division? You understand? That means one has to understand very, very deeply or perceive instantly the nature of thought, time, pleasure, and desire. Right? They are all. Interrelated, they're not separate things. Thought, time, pleasure, desire of one, they're interrelated. Right? So, to, un- to, to capture that perfume and to, for it to abide. All one's life, without any division, one must understand desire. Right? 
desire for most of us is extraordinarily important. Desire for God, desire for new house, desire for uh, somebody who is, with whom we can get on better, desire for more wealth, desire for greater peace, you know, desire that which is burning in all of us furiously. Desire has been very prominent in our lives, I thought. And various religions have said, suppress desire. When you enter a monastery, have you ever been in a monastery, any of you? I was in one. Speaker was in one. Doesn't matter. There, in the monasteries, and in the monks who are wandering the earth without any organization, they have desire. And desire being a dangerous thing. They say, don't look at a woman, only be committed to God, whatever it is you're committed. And man has always tried to suppress, control, shape desire. Right? You desire when one is young for some silly little thing. Then as you grow older, you desire for position, power, money, status. As you also grow much older, then you desire for some peace. Then you desire for immortality, if there is such a thing. Then you desire to escape from the fear, the darkness of death. From the beginning of life till the end of life, one is tortured by desire, with his pleasures too. Right? And as we said, is love desire? Is love pleasure? Pleasure is in the fulfilment of one's desire. I desire a car. When I get it, I am happy and satisfied. Not quite, because I want a bigger car. <laughs> and so on. Desire in its fulfilment brings satisfaction. From that satisfaction, gratification, there is great sense of pleasure, right? And we have done everything conceivable either to express fully our desires which is called freedom, or go to the other extreme, suppress desires. This has been the constant movement of man, both in the so-called spiritual world and in the world of in the exterior world. The expansion and the contraction of desire. And now we're trying to find out 
What is the origin, the beginning of desire? We are not saying we must suppress or fulfil. We are trying to not try. We are observing the whole movement of desire from the very beginning to the very end. Right? What is desire? 